Hey Maddie, did you start the popcorn? It's going right now. Is the movie ready to go? I'm just waiting on you guys. Zosha, are the rooms cleaned up? Yeah, we're just finishing Amelia's room. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, are you helping? Yes, Chief Bogle Cat is helping too. All right, well, when you're done cleaning up, put your jammies on. It's movie night. Hello, this is Mommy. What's up, everyone? I'm Daddy. Hi, I'm Sosha, and I'm seven years old. Hi, I'm a media and I'm five years old. And this week we watched Washed Away. DreamWorks put out this animation in 2006. It's rated PG and has a runtime of one hour and 25 minutes. Some other films they put out around the same time were Over the Hedge and Shrek the Third. This movie's about Roddy, a pampered pet rat who has everything he could ever want, except for friends and family. After a sewer rat makes his way into Roddy's home and flushes him down the toilet, he now has to find a way back up top and gets mixed up with Rita, a feisty boat captain who's on the run from the Toad and the Frog. Some familiar voices in this movie. Roddy is voiced by Hugh Jackman. He is Logan slash Wolverine in the X-Men series. He is the voice of the Easter Bunny in Rise of the Guardians, and he also plays P.T. Barnum in The Greatest Showman. Rita is voiced by Kate Winslet. She is Rose in Titanic, Janine in the Divergent series, and Ronal in Avatar The Way of Water. The Toad is voiced by Sir Ian McKellen. We know him as Magneto from the earlier X-Men films, Gandalf the Grey in the Lord of the Rings franchise, and he is the voice of Cogsworth in the remake of Beauty and the Beast. Whitey is voiced by Bill Nighy. He is David Jones in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies 2 and 3. He plays Saber in G-Force, Rattlesnake Jake in Rango, and Howard Clifford in Detective Pikachu. Spike is voiced by Andy Serkis, and we've all heard his voice at some point. He is Gollum slash Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings franchise. He is Caesar from the Rise of the Planet of the Apes franchise, and he is also Supreme Leader Snoke in Star Wars Episodes 7 through 9. In all those movies, he's in motion capture, so you don't get to see his face. However, one of the few movies you can see his face is when he's in Black Panther and he plays Ulysses Clow. And this movie has two directors, David Bowers, who directed Astro Boy and The Diary of a Wimpy Kid film series, and Sam Fell, who directed The Tale of Despero and Paranorman. All right, Zosha, did you learn anything from this movie? No, I didn't get anything from this movie. Fair enough. What about you, Amelia? I learned to be careful to not fall in the toilet or you eat it stuck in poop. Ooh, yeah, you'll get down to the poop pipes. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a good lesson. Although I don't think any of us would fit down the toilet. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Daddy, did you learn anything from this movie? I did. I learned that if you're going to somebody's house and you're their guest, do not make a mess. Do not just help yourself to their food and don't put your feet up on their furniture. There's a sewer rat that shows up in this movie and he is just a very bad guest. Now granted, he's not a guest. He barges in and just makes himself right at home. But that's something that I learned is like, you just have manners. Don't, don't do these things. They're wrong. Don't eat orange cheesy poofs on a white couch. Yes, do not. I was <laughs> never, I had an aunt who had a white room and Oof. we were not allowed to go into that room at all. How about you, mommy? What did you learn from this movie? I learned that friends and family are more important than having a big fancy house. You know, yeah, Roddy's got these awesome digs that he lives in. But once he heads down to the sewer, he realizes just how lonely he is. And it's a lot better to be surrounded by love than money. Absolutely. So the Jammy Dodger is the name of Rita's boat. I want to know what we would all name our boats. Zosha, what would you name your boat? The Disney Cruise Line. That's a good one. We do love a Disney Cruise Line. And we've been on the dream, the fantasy, and the wish. Zosha, which Disney Cruise Line ship was your favorite? The Wish. The Wish was your favorite? What was your favorite part about it? The pools. The pools were pretty great. Did you have a favorite pool that was there? Um, the Mickey Pool. The Mickey Pool. That was the one that was right below the big screen, right? Tunnel Vision. Yep, Tunnel Vision. That was awesome. Amelia, I see you over there getting excited because we're talking about the Disney Cruise. What was your favorite Disney Cruise ship? I liked the Wish, too. Okay, what was your favorite thing about going on to the Disney Wish? I like the poos too, but I really like the sweets more. Oh, the sweets were delicious on that ship. What was your favorite sweet that we had? The green chocolate cobble Oreo. 
Yeah, so we went into Joyful Sweets, which is the inside out themed ganachery, if you will. And she picked out this green disgust character. The character disgust. It was not <laughs> disgusting. It was very delicious. <laughs> and it was it was a good chocolate covered Oreo. I preferred the ice cream, but to each their own. Now, back to the podcast. <laughs> Emilio, what would you name your boat? I would name it Boat to the Future. <laughs> I like boat it. Boat to the Future. We just watched the entire franchise, so it's fresh in her mind. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys want to hear an episode on that, let us know. We'll, we'll cover Back to the Future. Mommy, what would you name your boat? I'm going with Buoyant Betty. It just has a nice ring to it. Betty is the name of one of my best friends. And uh, yeah, I would go on a boat with her. So let's just go on the buoyant Betty. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Daddy? Well, I've never named a boat before, but there's only one name that I could think of. And it's the most beautiful name in the whole wide world. The Lieutenant Dan. (laughs) Ain't got no legs. (laughs) (laughs) Boat doesn't have legs, so it's fine. (laughs) Yep, it works. So there's a lot of characters in this movie. Mommy, who is your favorite character? My favorite character is Whitey. He is so soft-spoken and has some great one-liners. It's very Bill Nighy-esque. I feel like he stands out in most of the movies that he's in. And he's supposed to be the dumb character, much like Kronk in Emperor's New Groove or like Pinky in Pinky of the Brain. But he ends up making all the smarter decisions compared to (laughs) his partner, Spike, who's just constantly seems like at this point, I don't even think Spike should be alive with the things that happens to him. But (laughs) yeah, it's a cartoon. So, okay, Amelia, what about you? Who is your favorite? I actually like the little mouse Spike. Oh, yeah. You like Whitey's partner? What do you like about him? He's funny and he's always sitting hot. He is always getting hurt. Is there a part that you like the most when he gets hurt? When they were about to fall in the water and he says, keep your legs straight. And he hits the ground instead of the water. He does. Whitey just keeps his legs straight and goes boop right into the water where Spike, again, I don't know how he gets back up and recovers from (laughs) some of these things. Daddy, who's your favorite? My favorite character was LaFrog. He's uh, the cousin to the Toad, (laughs) who is the main villain of the movie, but... uh, He's just over the top French and he's like one of the best spies, I guess, spy bad guys. And I just like when he he calls Rita his chocolate croissant and he's always got this hilarious posse that follows him around. And one of them includes a uh, A French mime. Yeah, French (laughs) mime. And it's just hilarious. I love Le Frog. How about you, Zosha? Who is your favorite character? I like Rita's little brother, Shocky. (laughs) Okay, this character has exactly... 14 seconds of screen time why do you like this character because he shocks people with a battery and it's funny (laughs) Uh, okay that's your answer solid all right so if we all had a day to ourselves at home like roddy had what would you guys do zosha i would sleep in and then i would make my toast with jellies after that i would play dolls and watch anya and elsia toddlers For those of you who don't know, Anya and Elsia is a channel called Come Play With Me on YouTube, and they just do all these different scenarios of the Frozen families, and it's cute. It helps inspire them to play, so a little plug for them. Daddy, what would you do with your day? I would probably wake up at my normal time, so it would be like 6.30, 7 o'clock, which is sleeping in for me, and I would just do a movie marathon throughout the day. I'd probably do like a comedy, a horror, an action, but in between every single movie, I would take a nap. Because I don't get to nap ever. And who knows? I probably won't even nap because I won't be able to do it. But then I would uh, I would order in some food. Probably different food. So like a beef sandwich. And then maybe a Chinese food. And then maybe some Taco Bell. Who knows? Who, who knows? I'm getting it's, wild. <laughs> it's going to get crazy in this house. How about you, Amelia? What would your day look like? I'll ride my hoverboard. I'll play with dolls. Order a Happy Meal. And then finish with painting my nails and watching Super Kitties. It's a good answer. It sounds like most of their weekends. They like to fill their time with their dolls and hoverboards and having some snacks. Yeah. My day would be enjoying the silence first off. If I was home alone, (laughs) like I would soak that in. But then I'd clean the house with my music going. After that, I'd do the full shebang shower. You know, the one where you do the face mask, shave, tweeze your eyebrows. Like, I would be in tip-top shape after that. (laughs) Then I would read whatever comics or novel I have and finish with DoorDash and some Chipotle. Okay, that sounds like a good day. wonderful day. (laughs) Daddy, what's your favorite scene? 
So whenever these slugs are on screen, <laughs> they're just always making sounds or eerie noises or singing songs. There's a there's a part where they sing Don't Worry Be Happy and they also sing Mr. Lonely and it's just hilarious. I love the slugs. I like when they scream. They're screaming so silly. I do love it. <laughs> yeah. Amelia, what was your favorite scene in this movie? I like when they were going to freeze Waddy and Rita. Whitey was wearing pink mittens and he was talking to Spike. When Spike and Whitey are talking, Whitey and Rita get away and Whitey and Spike freeze instead. Yeah, that is a very funny scene. Whitey and Spike have a very funny back and forth in that scene. How about you, Mommy? What was your favorite? So my favorite scene has my favorite character, Whitey, with a favorite one-liner of his. Spike is talking about how he hates happy endings. He likes a bad story with lots of pain. And right after saying this, Spike gets injured and Whitey says 100% concerned and serious. Are you happy now? Like, oh, it's just it's <laughs> yeah, it so good. good. It was just that last little like, oh, Whitey of the movie. Yeah. What about you, Zosha? What was your favorite scene? I like the beginning when Roddy's owners leave and he leaves his cage to play with the dolls. Oh, that is a funny scene. What does he do with them? He goes golfing, he plays volleyball, he has a movie night, drive around the house. Oh yeah, he's got his own like Barbie car, right? Mm Mm-hmm. What color is it? Red. What color car would you want? Teal. Teal, of course. All right, so does anybody else think it's weird that this family clearly has a lot of money and they go with like a $3 rat as a pet? Because I thought that was really weird. (laughs) I mean... They might be confined by uh, by laws of what you can have. Yeah, they could have, like a dog or a cat's better than just having a rat in a cage. Like I don't know, chinchilla, something <laughs> else. Like they have money, so I don't understand that. So if money wasn't a concern, what pet would you want? Because clearly you could build a habitat for it. You could you could probably find your way around some ordinances. You know, if money isn't an option, what are we getting here, Daddy? I think that I would go with a capybara. So people don't really know this by name, but a capybara is the animal that Antonio has in the movie Encanto. They're just a big rodent. They get to like the size of a medium sized dog. Like they're gigantic, but they cuddle. They're great swimmers and they're extremely friendly. So they get along with other animals. So that's what I would choose. A capybara. See, much better than just the rat. (laughs) Zosha, what are you going with? A koala. Ooh, a koala. What would you name it? Bo. You name it Bo? Mm-hmm. Okay, I like it. Amelia, what animal would you have? A cheetah. A cheetah. Wow. That's going to be hard to maintain. I mean, if you get it as a baby, you could probably train it to like, hey, only eat this steak I buy you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, it's a cat. It could be trained. Do you think that a cheetah would still chase like a laser light, Amelia? Yes. That'd be pretty cool. You, like, make it run up the walls with its speed. Oh, man, that'd be so cool. And he can climb me up to the tree. He would climb you up to the tree? He's going to do all the hard work for you, I guess. All right. And I can even ride on me when I have tired feet. I'd do the same thing. How about you, Mommy? What animal would you pick? So I am building an indoor tank, and I'm putting myself a manatee in there. And we would swim together, and I would feed him heads of cabbage, and we would just have the best days. I'd be so happy. (laughs) Spare no expense. So parents, I'm sure most of you overlooked this movie when it came out. Maybe Happy Feet or Santa Claus 3 were higher on your lists of must-sees. But when Wolverine, Rose, and Gandalf are in a voice cast for a movie, you go see it. And outside of the cast that we mentioned, there's a bunch of other characters that are just hilarious in this movie. The runtime is shorter at an hour and a half. The pacing does go off a few times, so I could see why people wouldn't like it. And the animation is just good. But DreamWorks wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel here. But one of my biggest gripes in this movie in the animation is the design of the rats. I think they were just given too many human characteristics, like longer legs and torsos. And the girl rats have curves. It wasn't overdone, but it was kind of weird. You just kind of forget that you're watching a movie about rats. But like most 2000 DreamWorks films, as an adult, it's just going to hit the spot or it's just going to miss completely. Kids will probably like it because there's a bunch of silly characters. But as an age recommendation, I'm probably going to say four and up would be a good age to show your kids. Now, mommy, hit them with that parental guidance. 
So the language in this movie is completely clean, no worries there. Violence, it is all cartoon violence with freezing rats, Spike just getting smashed by whatever object you can possibly <laughs> think of, and then Roddy gets hit in his personal space multiple times. Scary-wise, Amelia only mentioned one part that got to her, and it's at the beginning of the movie where Roddy's in bed and he hears that strange noise. So he gets up and finds his flashlight, and he's trying to search, like, uh-oh, somebody's in the house, but he's all alone. It ended up just being Sid covered in chocolate cake, so he looked like a monster. So in the end, nothing really scary going on. There is one part that might concern some kids, and it's when the toad is trying to flood the entire rat city to get rid of everyone. It's a little suspenseful. There's also a few boat chases that can get a little intense. Grown-up stuff. There's a part where Roddy accidentally pulls Rita's pants down and we see her underwear. Around that same scene, Whitey remarks that the booty is in the booty when he realizes that Rita is hiding the ruby in her back pocket. The last scene that's a little questionable is when Rita takes Roddy back to her house and the grandma thinks that Roddy is Tom Jones. She's going on and on, you know, ranting and raving like girls at a concert, like, oh, it's Mr. Jones. And she throws her underwear at him during dinner. So that's a little like, okay, calm down, grandma. <laughs> cry factor. I don't think there's anything in this movie that's going to make you cry. So Rotten Tomato critics give this movie a 73, which is a thumbs middle. Audiences give this movie a 65, which is also a thumbs middle. Let's see how it holds up in our house. Zosha, do you give Flushed Away a thumbs up, a thumbs middle, or a thumbs down? Thumbs down. Wow, this is your first thumbs down. What don't you like about this movie? The story and it's boring. Okay, I get it. That's your critique. That's fine. Amelia, what do you give this movie? Thumbs down. Oh, wow. Two thumbs down. Mommy, what do you give this movie? It's going to be three thumbs down. <laughs> I did not like this movie at all outside of Whitey. Um, he's the only saving grace for me. It just, yeah, it was... It was boring. It didn't really make sense. I just, I guess the biggest thing is I didn't care about the story. Like, there was nothing to care about. Okay. I'm going to give this movie a thumbs middle. It was all right. I'm not going to say it was a bad movie, and I'm not going to say it's a good movie. So, just thumbs middle for me. And if any of you would like to add Flushed Away to your movie night list, it is currently streaming on Peacock or available across platforms. And after watching, let us know if you give it thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And when you want to let us know what you think about the movie, please find us on social media. We like to post pictures of us on our movie nights, letting you know what snacks and sweets we're eating. We post a dad joke as well as a sneak peek clip theme to the episode coming out that week. It's a fun place to hang out. Our Facebook is It's Movie Night and our Instagram is It's Movie Night Pod. Thank you for listening. Join us next week for another movie night. Bye! Bye.